Where does the oil come from? Well, oil comes from uh, various uh, sources from uh, across the globe, as we all know. One is uh, constantly looking for new sources of oil outside of the, the well-known regions. Uh, in the North Sea, for example, we have a, a typically lighter oil, which is very suitable for fuels and, and heating and so on. The kind of oil that we need for our products is mainly of the sweet Arabian crude type, which is particularly suitable with, with its uh, natural composition. It, it varies very much depending on where it comes from on the planet and from what geological age. Anyway, this, this uh, sweet Arabian type crude is very good, it has good yields of, of these paraffinic base oils, which we're interested in. And it's uh, typically refined in, in uh, big refineries in, in uh, France or Germany, uh, England and so on. And then it's brought to us by tanker boats. These tank boats come at a frequency of about once per month. So that means that we have very large holding tanks uh, very close to the plant where we have the base oils. And based on just a few, maybe four or five different qualities, we make most of the product in most of the ranges. Uh, then we also have uh, synthetic base oils, uh, which come from, from other types of refineries, also in, in uh, Northern Europe or even from South Korea, but it's, it's uh, shipped in through the hubs in, in um, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, etc. And we have these in big holding tanks as well. So maybe 80% of the production is mineral oil based and 20% is synth synthetic or environmentally adapted type. One of the difficulties with, with operating a lubricant factory is that you always, of course, want to have another system. Maybe if we had just one more tank. But of course it's limited, it's, it's not unlimited, it's, a, it's a, one of those things we have to live with. So we have to come up with an economical use of the raw materials, especially then the bulk products. And from these bulk products we try to make uh, as many products as we would like to have. The different types of additives that we have, about 10 different kinds, all have different roles. They can uh, be, for example, protecting against oxidation. They can be helping the, the oil to get rid of uh, water or to emul emulsify it if you want to have water in, in an emulsion. You can control things like uh, rust and corrosion on, on steel and uh, other uh, materials like bearing materials. And also, very importantly, one can tune the mechanical properties of the fluid according to the needs of the, of the, of the usage uh, gearbox, for example, where you have uh, sliding and rolling contact and high loads, etc. Or in an engine where you have combustion, where you have intense heat, you have, you have formation of perhaps soot particles and acidic uh, combustion components and so on, where the oil actually has several different tasks that it has to perform at the same time. That's quite typical actually of, of an advanced lubricant, that it has to do many different things at the same time or at different times depending on the conditions change. But it all has to be contained in that same one product. And that's what drives complexity in, in the product range also. We have about 650 different formulations and that may sound like a lot, but if you actually look in detail or in great detail, on the different demands of different applications. That, that's one number you come up with. We could easily have many more, but this is what, like a, an optimum range of a number of products to cover the needs of the product range. Synthetic oil or synthetic lubricant, that's now been with us for a long time, for 20 so years. Uh, in the old days, of course, there was only mineral oil, straight oil, and then some oil with some additives. And then as, as uh, technology progressed, uh, synthetic fluids became available and they became uh, attractive to use for the engine builders and the car builders. Basically what you can do uh, with a synthetic oil is that you can have an oil that changes much less over time. It has a very stable behavior, it doesn't become thicker, it doesn't become thinner. It works also when it's cold and when it's uh, warm outside. Uh, when I was a child 35 years ago, we had to change oil in the winter and the summer. You had different grades. Now that, all of that is history. So you have the multi-grade oils and uh, some of these are of course built on synthetic technology. So it's, it's a purer uh, type of fluid with, with a more defined uh, uh, properties. So you can make the fluids more exact. You can make them more tuned to, to what you need. And, Without generalizing too much, one can say that all kinds of modern equipment, be it vehicles or, or um, industrial equipment, really is an increasingly uh, amount relying on synthetic lubricants. And I would say the, the world demand for, for synthetics uh, has now grown to maybe 15 and 20 or 20 percent. 
uh, and, and the rest being then uh, mineral oil basically. So synthetics are a very important uh, tool and very necessary part of, uh, of modern industrialized society, especially in transportation.